Studies show that 80% of our thoughts are negative. I believe that that's gonna vary from person to person. And I believe that people who express more negativity externally and internally are gonna have more trouble at the poker table. So I'm gonna talk you through why I believe that is and what you can do about it. In 2011, I moved to Vancouver, Canada to continue playing online poker when they shut it down. It was the first time I'd ever lived with a poker playing friend, you know, an extended period of time. I'd spent some summers with groups of friends, but this is the first time I've been in the same house or apartment. We had no office in our apartment, so we both set up our computers on opposite ends of a very big kitchen table, and that's where we played from. And both of us were generally mild-mannered, non-expressive people. If you had a camera right here while I was playing, if I wasn't streaming or something else, you wouldn't see much of a reaction from me when, when anything happens, and, and he was kind of the same way. But all of a sudden, because there was another person in the room, we kind of slowly developed a habit of complaining about bad beats. So he would lose a pot and be like, oh man, that was sick. And I would do the same thing. And, and it actually kind of escalated over time where it just became normal for us to, I mean, essentially whine about losing pots. What I realized after a little while of that is that I was actually getting tilted a lot more easily and somehow expressing the emotion or complaining about being unlucky was impacting me in some way. And so I, I did a lot of thinking about, you know, why that was. So another friend that I'd spent summers with in Las Vegas, he would lose a pot online, he'd get mad, he'd throw his mouse at the wall, shatter. He would try to put it back together, but like usually, like usually he could put it back together, the batteries had flown out and he, he could put it back together, but sometimes he broke the mouse. And then he was fine, he would throw it and then he was fine. There are some people who, when they have anger or something resembling anger, they get it out and it kind of releases it and they feel better. First of all, I'm not that kind of person. But second of all, what we were doing was not so much releasing anger, it was more just complaining. I believe that what all the complaining was doing was making me remember the unlucky events more readily. So it started to feel like I was unluckier than I was. When you feel like you're unlucky, when you've been on a long extended uh, bad run, you can start to get knocked off your game more easily because you're a little more emotionally unstable. You have this story that you're telling yourself that that you're unlucky. Then you tell yourself, no, no, that's not a real thing. You know, everybody's luck going going forward is gonna be even and I'm gonna run normal from here on out. And so you're doing okay for a while, you're mentally okay, and then you lose again. And you're like, uh, you fall back into that mindset of, no, I'm unlucky and this is this is really upsetting. In college, I was taught about something called the shampoo effect. You know, when you, when you wash your hair with shampoo, you use whatever amount of shampoo, you lather, you rinse, and if you use if you want to shampoo again, only a small amount of shampoo will get you as much lather. They use that to uh, to refer to drinking. If you went out one night drinking, and you want to drink the next morning, you get drunk pretty quickly off of a a couple of drinks. And I think the same thing is true of tilt. It becomes easier for a couple of bad beats to tilt you in a way that it it used to take a dozen bad beats to do. So when I realized that, I stopped complaining as much. And he happened to stop complaining as much too. And I, I, I do think it genuinely helped. So there's something called a, a negativity bias. And the way this works, this is not exclusive to poker by any means, it's, it's everywhere. If you've ever had to pick a line at the grocery store, you go into the one that seems the shortest, and then the one next to you that had like one extra person in it is just moving much faster and it goes, goes right past you. That kind of sticks in your mind and you start to think, ah, this always happens to me. Whereas if you get in the shortest line, and then it goes the fastest. You don't think anything of it. That's just what was supposed to happen. Same thing happens in traffic. As soon as I move to this lane, that one's gonna start moving and this one's gonna stop because those events stick out in your memory more than what is supposed to happen of you move to this lane because it's moving and it keeps moving. That happens everywhere. It can be really detrimental to your mental, emotional well-being. We've all had friends who will say something like, you know, well, with my luck, this is what's gonna happen. Why do these things always happen to me? I'm so unlucky, things like that. I don't know about your experience, but in my experience, those people tend to be people who seem less happy more often. Now, obviously you could argue that if somebody's having bad thing after bad thing happen to them, they're supposed to be unhappy. A lot of times it's, it's their view of how the world is treating them, in my opinion. Not only can feeling like you're unlucky or being unlucky so many times tilt you more easily, it can also, make you shy away from risks, both at the table while you're in a hand. Ah, I think this is a shove, but with my luck, I'm gonna run into a big hand. I think this is a call, but 
the flop's going to be nasty for me. I just, uh, I'll just fold now and, and not have to deal with it. Or off the table in terms of playing in a game that you should because it's making you uncomfortable. You think you won't run well. Although with that specific example, don't play in a game if it's starting to make you feel uncomfortable, usually, because you'll play, you'll play worse than you would otherwise. It can impact your EV in one way or another. It impacts your happiness level, which, you know, what's more important than that? How do we counteract negativity bias? There are ways to not let it impact you as much. So one of the first is doing kind of the opposite of what my friend and I were doing. Rather than complain about the bad things that happen, celebrate when the good things happen. You know, I'm not one when I'm playing to do either very much naturally, but celebrating the good things happening make those more memorable. And celebration is a good feeling. It makes you feel good. I had a, had a friend who taught me a con he was trying to help me, taught me a concept and I just couldn't really execute it because of my personality. But basically what he does is he sets, I, I feel like it was every three hours, what he calls a joy alarm. And so his joy alarm goes off and he sits there and he asks himself some questions, you know, I wish I remember all the questions he asked, but it's something along the lines of, you know, am I financially secure? Do I have people who love me? And he, he goes through the list and then, and usually there are things that he does have. And then he essentially celebrates as if, you know, you're in a bar and your team just won. And I, I couldn't get comfortable with, <laughs> with that. So I didn't incorporate it into my life. I tried a couple of times. It just, it was, I'm glad there wasn't a camera on when I was, but the concept stuck with me and I still tried to, in my own way, in my own less expressive way, celebrate when good things happen to me. Another one is to express gratitude. It's along the same lines, really. You can give thanks in, in a written form or a verbal form to yourself or, you know, if you pray to God or to the people and things that you're grateful for. I don't know all the scientific reasons why that that's so helpful, but if you're expressing gratitude for things and you're celebrating wins, you're gonna remember all of the good things that are happening to you more than you would have otherwise. And another one is is to do the opposite of, of what that friend I mentioned earlier does. So this is one that I do. I call myself a lucky person. So let's say that I'm gonna buy a piece of somebody who's playing in a big tournament. I'll buy 10% of their action. And I'll say, don't worry, my money's lucky. And I don't actually believe that me in investing in them is gonna make them more lucky. I like to say it both for myself and, um, why do I like to do that? I mean, objectively, I'm a lucky person. I was born in America to a loving family uh, who are financially secure, who took great care of me. I've had great friends. I have had a great career. I have a great family now. I'm objectively a lucky person and I know that I'm lucky and I appreciate all of that. But that doesn't mean that I'm gonna be lucky in the future. Yet, I still like to say that I think I will be. And I think it just helps with mindset. It, it can kind of drag you down if somebody around you is always complaining or always not believing in themselves and not believing good things are gonna to happen to them. I think it makes me a more pleasant person to be around. To sum up, if you're the type of person that expresses anger and it helps you get it out, go for it by all means. But make sure you're celebrating wins as well. And if you're not that kind of person, or if you are, there's a difference between in the moment letting out your anger and two hours later complaining to your friend about how unlucky you were. Try to minimize those behaviors. They're bad for you. They're, they're not helping your friend, certainly. And yeah, celebrate your wins, express gratitude, and uh, I like to, I, you don't have to do this, but it works for me. I like, I like to consider myself lucky. By the way, if you're enjoying this and you want to see more, please let me know in the comments that you are, what you'd like to see. Consider liking and subscribing to my channel. I am making a lot of content in the coming months and I very much hope you're going to enjoy it as well.